Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ raising up Jesus believers throughout New England the nation, Canada and the world and now our pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sense of hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs, and I'm certain that God is going to do just that. So God has given us, he's so faithful. Again, he's given us a word to share with you. This is what we shared on Sunday, but you know, as always, we're just going to let the Lord have his way. But I pray that when it's all said and done, you're blessed, edified, encouraged, and then God will confirm the word. And when he does, we say to God be all the glory. But I thank God for you. I don't have much time. I want to get into this word. But listen, go to our YouTube channel. I, I'm trying to build that up and get some more subscribers. Go to you, go to our YouTube channel, E.I. Osborne. When you get there, you'll find hundreds of messages. Find one that you enjoy, and I'm sure after you enjoy it, I'd love for you to like it. Hit that thumbs up, that like button, and then share it on your social media pages. Uh, uh, you can email it to a friend or a family member. Uh, but most importantly, while you're there, click the subscribe button and become a subscriber. Okay, we'd love for you to do that. And share the channel with, with your friends and family as well. But listen, also, come check us out Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Deliverance Revival Tabernacle, 298 High Street. Duxbury, Massachusetts. I'm looking for you this Sunday. This is your personal invitation, okay? Come check us out. I think you'll enjoy the service, and we would love to have you, all right? And when you come, come expecting a miracle. I believe in miracle signs and wonders, so come expecting a miracle. And also when you come, I've written a new book called The Lie of Fear. You know, God instructed me to write this book. It's from some of the messages that we've, that we've ministered. But so many people struggle with fear today. It, it's, it's not very often that I turn on the television to some Christian uh, television or radio program or whatever on, on radio, and uh, someone's not preaching or teaching about fear because fear is so prevalent today. And with the different things that are happening in the world, the wars and rumors of wars and the political climate and all these different things, fear is so prevalent. But once you read this book, The Lie of Fear, once you read this and have an understanding of fear and the spirit of fear and what it's all about, your life will never be the same. You'll never deal with fear on the same way or same level that you did before, okay? You can find this book. You can purchase this wherever books are sold. Go to Amazon. You can get the Kindle version of it. You can get the paperback version. If you look at the Kindle version, there may not be a cover, picture of the cover, but on the paperback, if you click that, then you'll see the cover, a copy of the cover, and so on. And order several copies for people and friends to minister to them as well, okay? So let's pray. Let's get into the Word. Father, thank you for this opportunity to minister to those you've allowed to be listening and watching right now. You are such an awesome God, and you are so good, and you're good all the time. Bless us right now as I yield and surrender to you. Take control. Have your way. Lord, you know what, who's going to be watching, who's listening, and what they need to hear. Those watching on cable access television, those listening on the radio right now, you know what they need. You know what they need to hear. So as I yield and surrender to you, let use me right now. Uh, as your instrument to minister to the needs and confirm the word with miracles, signs, and wonders. And I thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? So the thing that the Lord dropped in my spirit to minister to people and to minister to you today is from 3 John 2. I'm going to start in 3 John 2. And in this epistle, this letter, it's John writing to the church of his day, to, to this Gaius and this person and so on. But don't just take it as something written to someone else. It's in the Bible, the Word of God. So God put it in this Bible, not just as some type of historical document and letter to see what was being written to this person. It was God's way of speaking to you. It was God using this to tell you his thoughts, his desire, his will, and so on for you and I even today, the church of that day, and even us today in the body of Christ. So the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. So yes, this, this, this is, is greeting is to him and so on. But God, if God didn't want us to take this to our, unto ourselves, it's not just a historical letter there to see what was being written to this man. It is God using it to speak to you, okay? It's like, you know, I don't know if you may still, some people may still do this, but a lot of times, you know, maybe you have you and your husband or you and your girlfriend, you and your boyfriend, you have your, your song. That's our song. 
Well, why is it your song? Because the lyrics in that song, yeah, whoever wrote it, they don't even know you. They don't know you, maybe, in, many, in most cases, they don't know you, never met you, probably never will. But somehow the lyrics in that song or that poem that someone wrote, they didn't write it to you or for you at the time, right? But you saw it and you, 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 you put it in a frame and gave it to your spouse or your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You saw it and now you gave them a copy of that song and now the, and the, you played it at your wedding or whatever. That's your song. Because what? Those words expressed your feelings. Well, God put this letter here to express his feelings to us, his beloved. Beloved, verse 2, beloved, I wish, I will. That's his, that word wish means his will. His desire, I wish, I will, I desire, above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So God wants you to prosper. And so I've heard people dispute it. No, it doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean that. It's a letter. All that. Okay, well, but God said, I said, Lord, am, am I wrong about that? Is, is it not your will for me to prosper and be enough? You know, when I look at the things that people are going through, well, you, you can't tell me that by what people are going through. Well, what people are going through and what God says in his word is two different things. There are many reasons why people are going through some of the things they're going through. It doesn't change the truth of God's word. God also said in Hosea 4 and 6, for my people, people of God, body of Christ, right? My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So people can be going through things sometimes simply because they don't know God's word. They don't know God's will. They don't know God wants them to prosper and be in health. They don't know God wants to heal them. They don't know that God wants to help them and so on. They don't know. So because they don't know, you know, they're not experiencing it. They're being deprived of the things that God wants them to have because of their lack of knowledge. But today, God wants you to know that he wants you to prosper, beloved. And oh, it doesn't mean, some people, oh, it doesn't mean that. Well, when I prayed about it, Lord, I heard someone teaching. I said, Lord, am I wrong? Is it really? And I looked at the verse again. I felt impressed to look at the verse again. When I looked at it again, that first word jumped out. Some people, someone might call that a rhema word, like a, like a revelation or something. But that first word, beloved. And when I, when I saw that word, I realized, no, God is saying what he means and meaning what he says. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And what I realized is this. What hit me was this. Everyone that I beloved, all of my beloved, all of my beloved and so on, you know what I want for them? I want them to prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers. Because yes, the priority, the most important thing is that they're saved. You know, I don't want, just want them to become, you know, successful and all like that and, 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 and prospering and healthy and they're just doing it and living in sin and on their way to hell. No, first thing, I want them saved. But then after, once they're saved and as they're saved, you know what, as they grow spiritually, I want them to grow naturally. Because natural, you have to grow in both areas because if not, it, it, you're out of balance and anything that's out of balance is going to fall. The reason people sometimes give up on God, lose, lose their faith and, and leave the church and all that is because sometimes they've grown so much spiritually. They have grown so much spiritually in the things of God, the word of God, but yet they see sickness and they see different things happening and it doesn't make any sense to them. Why? Because they're not experiencing the natural. You know, they've grown spiritually, but they're still struggling. They still, they still live in paycheck to paycheck, boat, broke, busted, disgusted, can hardly take care of their families like that. And they, and they just, and they know what the word says about it, but yet they say, well, what's going So they lose their faith. Right? So God wants it to be a balance. And then if it's the other way around where you're prospering and not growing spiritually, well, hey, that's going to be a disaster as well. So God says, he says, as your soul prosper. And so that's what I want. I want that from all of my beloved. But God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So make no mistake about it. Your lack in poverty and sickness and disease, it is not of God. It is not God's will, not God's desire or God's, or God's plan for your life. And there's no reason for you to sell everything you have and go move to the mountains and live in a cave or something trying to give it. I'm giving it all up for the Lord. You know, when I started preaching and so on, my dad wanted to be with the Lord and I started pastoring like that. I was working at a place and so on. And my dad went through the same thing. And the Lord told him to quit the job and go full time in ministry. He told me the same thing. He struggled for a while to do it. He had a family to feed and like that. You know, you need money, you need benefits, whatever. I struggled as well. All right. But the purpose, the purpose was not so that my family and I or his family could go live under a bridge and be begging and, and standing at the corner with a cup. And if people have to do that, I'm not judging them or whatever. But that wasn't God's purpose. The purpose was is because if we're going to preach faith, that we need to be living faith. I shouldn't be preaching something to you, something to you that I'm not doing myself. So we preach faith and we live faith. We live by faith. 
And living by faith does not mean you, you, you're walking everywhere with holes in your shoes, with ripped up, torn up clothes that, that you know, you're finding in somebody's trash. No, you know what faith does? Faith makes things better. Faith, faith produces miracles. Faith causes, produces the impossible. When Jesus needed money to pay the taxes and so on, you know what he told him? He says, go catch a fish. And he said, that first fish that you catch, the money that you need, whatever the amount of money was, it was in that fish's mouth. Faith doesn't make you. You know what happened when, by faith when Peter said, hey, in Luke chapter 5, he said, Jesus said, let t cast out, you know, go, go out into the deep and cast out your net. And Peter said, Lord, we've toiled all night. He said, but at thy word, see, faith in God's word. He said, we've toiled all night. He's the fisherman. Jesus is a carpenter. And, and at that time of day, the fish aren't biting. There's no fish out there. We've toiled all night. They fish at night while the sun's not on the water and the water's low and the fish come up to eat because after that, they're going down. They're, you're not going to catch it. You might catch one. You're not going to let down your net. And you know what? He says, Lord, we've toiled. But at thy word, see, believing, having faith in the word of God, you know what? He let down the net. And, they, and the Bible says, and, they, uh, for a dry, and they, oh, they took in so many fish, they couldn't even put them all in their boat. They had to call their other partners and friends to help them to catch all the boat, breaking, you know, whatever load of fish that, that they got. Because of what? Faith in God's word. That's what faith in God, that's what trusting God, that's what trusting God is all about. It's not about going to live in the mountain somewhere in a cave, you know, with no electricity and no, no, no running water and no bathrooms. You, you need a bathroom, okay? I don't know about you, but I need a bathroom, all right? But not right now, but you need one, right? So here's the thing. Because God says, I wish I will. And all the sickness, disease, poverty, and lack in the world, it is not of God. You know why it exists? It resists because of man's rebellion against God. God's plan. You want to know God's plan? Read Genesis 1 and 2. God created everything that man would need to sustain his life on the earth in abundance with the ability for things to reproduce after their own kind, which means Adam in that garden, all right, would have never experienced lack, poverty, sickness, disease, or death because there was no death. Adam would have never had an accident, fallen over a cliff and, and, and died, tripped on a, uh, something in the garden and, and hit his head and died or, but, you know, or, or, or something. No, there was no accidents, no sickness, no disease, nothing to cause death, no poverty, no lack. All of that, according to Romans chapter 5, came into the world through sin. Sin came into the world, Romans 5 and 12 says, sin came into the world, and death by sin. So death, death, death is not God's plan, never has been God's plan. God's plan is life and, ha and life more abundantly, in abundance to the full, to the overflows. God says, I wish, I will, my desire above all things is that you prosper and be in health. So sickness and disease, if you're struggling with sickness, if you're struggling in poverty, poverty and sickness is a curse. Don't believe for one moment God is trying to teach you a lesson. God is trying to get your attention. No, the devil is trying to kill you. You see, you've left the, the protection. You've left the, the, the uh, you're, you've walked away from God and so on. And as a result of that, here comes the devil. Light, God is light. In him is no darkness at all. First John 1 and 5, right? God is light. And once the light has departed, what's, what's left? Darkness. Here comes darkness with the sickness, the disease, the poverty, lack, all these things. To what? To take you out, to kill you. So you better know what's of God and what isn't, what to resist and what to accept. Somebody's being healed in your left hand and in, in, in your thumb in this area. Now, I don't know what you did to this area. Uh, maybe I'll go this side right here on your, with your, on the, on your thumb here in this area of your hand right here. God is healing that right there right now for someone, all right? Now, maybe your whole hand is bothering you. Maybe it hurts worse than that spot right there but God is healing someone's hand right there, right now, okay? But listen, God is moving. As Jesus was teaching, the Bible says, the, prow the power of God was present to heal. Well, I'm doing the same thing, teaching. And while I'm teaching, the power of God is present to heal. So whatever your, your situation is, receive it right now, because God sent this word for you to know that he wants you to prosper and be in health. Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. He wants you to so if your thought, your idea was, well, God's going to try to teach me a lesson, God's trying to get your attention. God's trying, or God's trying to slow you down because, you know, you know, you, you move into it. I don't know why people say that kind of stuff. Christians, you know, that they supposedly know the word, know God. You see, God's, you, you just, you're just doing too much. You're doing too much, and God needed you to just rest and take a break. So you, that's why you got COVID. The devil is a liar. See, God needed, he, you, you were doing too much, and God needed you to rest and take. I'm, I'm talking to someone specifically. You riding in the car together. 
God needed you to take a break and rest. So he let you get that. No, the devil is alive. That's the devil trying to kill you. God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, okay? There is no sickness, no disease, no poverty or lack that's of God. God is a God of abundance. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. He is the healer. He is not the one making people sick. God doesn't have a little basket of sickness and disease, and every now and then throws a little cancer on someone, a little heart disease or something. That's the devil. That's a, a, as a result of living in a fallen world when these things happen. Our bodies are not are, are restored yet and so on. And so, hey, those things. But God has provided healing. And listen, think about what he did. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Think about the price that Jesus paid. You know, he went through all of that, not just so that you can be forgiven, you know, because really the reality is without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. So Jesus could have easily, like they did with the different sacrifices, slit the throat, let the blood be shed. That's it. Price is paid. But Jesus suffered. The Bible says in Isaiah, his visage, his form was so marred more than any other man. That beating, that scourging, you know, when he was tied to the whipping post and beaten, possibly with more than 39 stripes save one. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, think about those stripes. Think about that cat of nine sails with those metal things, spikes, just ripping his flesh apart. If you don't think God wants you to be healed, man, Jesus went through all that for nothing because that was for the healing. With his stripes, you are healed. The blood was for the price for your sin. But that scourging, that whipping, that beating, that was so that you could receive the healing and restoration that God wants you to have, that he paid the price for you to have because it's his will. And it, and, it, and it is so much his will and his desire that he was willing to pay the price to go through all of that so that you could receive your healing right now. God wants you to be healed. God wants you well. That disease, that sickness, that poverty, that, 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 that insufficiency, right, and so on. It's time. This, I pray that this is the last time you have a check that bounces or a credit card that's maxed out or whatever it might be, or you struggle financially, living from paycheck to paycheck. I pray that every month you have more money than month instead of you know, more month than money. All right. Every month you just have something left over. Maybe this month. OK, I don't know when you hear this, but this month you'll find, man, you have you have you've never had extra fifty dollars. You've always been by a negative twenty dollars or thirty dollars or whatever, wondering what you're going to do. I pray this will be the first month. Maybe you have an extra hundred dollars and then the next month you have an extra two hundred dollars. Not because you're, you're working you, you, you yourself to, to, you know, with all, oh, well, they, thank God they're giving me some overtime. I got 20 hours of overtime. So you're working 60 hours a week. You're working 80 hours a week. You know, God doesn't want you to destroy yourself also, you know, it, it just try, God, because God is, he's a, he's a supernatural God, you know, uh, and he's given his people ways for us to prosper and succeed. But God, make no mistake about it, wants you to prosper and be in health. So you rebuke that sickness, take authority, resist the devils, James 4 and 7. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist it and don't accept it. See, the lie of the devil is he'll tell you you did something wrong, you're doing something wrong, you brought this on yourself, and so on and so forth. You know what? The devil's a liar. God has forgiven you of those sins, and now it's time for you to be healed, it's time for you to be whole, it's time for you to be well, it's time for you to be restored. Let me go to Mark chapter 10. Because the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10, he comes to Jesus and he says, he says, good master, what shall I do? Verse 17, that I may inherit eternal life. And yes, well, Jesus told him to go sell everything he has and give it to the poor, take up his cross and follow me. That wasn't to make him poor. That was so that he could overcome his trusting in riches. Jesus said in verse 23, and Jesus looked round about and saith unto the disciples, how hardly shall they that, that have riches unto the kingdom all right. And they were astonished. But he says in verse 24, he says, children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches. So it's not the problem of being rich. The problem is trusting. This rich young ruler trusted his riches to the extent that when Jesus said, go sell everything you have, uh, give it to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. He went away grieved. He was angry. Why? Showing you he trusted in his riches. But if you just keep reading, okay, after that happens, Peter, verse 28, then Peter began to say unto him, Lord, saying, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Peter's basically heard that conversation between Jesus and the rich young ruler. 
the rich man, and, and he's saying, he's thinking, man, we did that. I left all my fishing business, left all this stuff behind, whatever, right, to follow you. And Jesus answered and said, listen to what he says. Verse 29, verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. He would have gotten it all back a hundredfold, a hundredfold in his lifetime. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands for, uh, with persecution and in, and in the world to come eternal life because God wants you to prosper and be in health. You know, I think of Psalms 105. Uh, Psalms 105, let me go here. Psalms 105 and around verse 37, I think it is, where, where children, the children of Israel, after their 430 years of bondage, or 400 years of bondage, okay, come out of Egypt, they didn't come out broke, busted, and disgusted. And yes, they're going to the promised land. They're going to the land that flows with milk and honey. But God didn't say, well, you're broke right now, but once you get to the promised land, you know, you'll start, you'll be all right. You'll... No, you know what happened? It says in verse 37, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. They left rich to become, to go to the promised land, right, the, the land that flows with milk and honey, to become more rich. He brought them forth also with silver, gave them the plan, go borrow from the Egyptians. And they weren't stealing. They're basically saying borrow as a way of, the, even the Egyptians knew they wouldn't see them anymore, but it was a way of getting back the things that had been stolen. As a slave, you don't have any rights. Somebody wants something of yours, they take it. What are you going to do? Also, for their 400 years, whatever amount of the time that they were there as slaves, they weren't being paid for their wages. So they're getting their wages retroactive. But God didn't just say, well, it's good enough for you to get out of here, good enough for you to go free. Once you get to the promised land, you'll be all set. No, he brought them forth with silver and gold, wealthy, to go what? To the promised land, the land that flows, flows with milk and honey, to, to become more wealthy. Silver and gold. And listen, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Isn't that something? And it says, Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. But it says, they brought, he brought them forth with silver and gold. There was not one feeble person among their tribes. They were wealthy and healthy. I know in the movies, they're, they're being carried out on stretches and dragged behind donkeys and horses and all like that, which is definitely not a good place to be if you know what happens behind donkeys and horses. But the point is, right, God healed them all. He said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee, and they all got healed. Isn't that something? That, that, that's, that's, I wish above all things that you are prosper, silver and gold, and be in health, not one feeble person, right? That's, that's God showing you right there. Here's what, and then read Deuteronomy 28. If you diligently hearken, and so he says, all these blessings, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, do all these things that I command you this day, all these blessings will come upon you. One place it says, God, he says, I'll command the blessing upon you. He says, you're going to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, going to be above only, never beneath, blessed going in, blessed coming out, and all that, right? He says, you're going to be a lender, not a bar. But I like the one where he says, I'm going to command the blessing. I'm going to command you to be blessed. Isn't that something? That's, what, that, that's God's will. So receive it right now. Father, I pray for people right now, anyone, Lord, who's been struggling financially, who is going through any type of sickness, disease, or, or anything like that, physical ailment, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I take authority over it now. And Lord, because of this word, through this word, I ask you to confirm this word with miracles, signs, and wonders. Let people receive their healing right now. Thank you for that person whose left hand uh, on that thumb area. It might even feel a little warm. You might be feeling a little heat or something in that left, in that left uh, uh, thumb area right there. You know, this part of your thumb, man, it's feeling, you're feeling that, but God is healing. Thank you for that right now. Now, if you don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sin, say this with me right now. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Ghost with a manifestation of all the gifts and the fruit of the spirit. I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you're saved, you're born again, you're on your way to heaven. And I may not see you in time, but if I don't see you in time, I'll see you in eternity. I thank God for you. Again, listen, go to Amazon or come to the church. We, got, we have some copies. Matter of fact, if you come to the church and you tell me you saw this here on the program or you heard about my book, The Lie of Fear, if you tell me you heard it on the radio or you saw it on the television program, I'll give it to you at a, a little discount. I give it to you a little discount. You get a little discount anyway. I'm not going to give it to you because I find that when you give people books and so on, as books have been given to me, you don't really read them. You don't really, you know, as much as, as many times you got these things laying around. But when you pay for something, you appreciate it a little more. But I'll give you, if you say you saw it on television or you heard me on the radio mentioning it, 
we'll give you a little, make sure you tell someone that and they give you a little discount on it and all like that. Or go to Amazon or wherever books are sold and get your copy of The Lie of Fear, okay? Look forward to seeing you this Sunday. But until then, we want to remind you, Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live. Thank you for tuning in to The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like some information on anything you heard in today's episode or to find out how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please call us at 508-746-4085. If you would like a copy of this message, further information about our ministry, or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.eiosborne.org or correspond by mail at The Time Is Now, P.O. Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. On behalf of the ministry, thank you.